Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and I'd like to show you how to read an MRI of the lumbar spine. So to start with, we have a view here where we're looking straight at the patient. It's called a coronal image. On this view, it's a pretty large field of view, which means we see lots of area within the abdomen here. This is the right kidney, left kidney, so we can see if the patient has a renal mass or if they have obstruction of the kidney. We also see way down low in the pelvis, so we can see there's a little ovarian follicle with a, little, with a tiny bit of leaking fluid, so we look for pelvic pathology. We can see lots of things like the vertebral bodies here, if they're normal in height. Each one of these squares is a vertebral body, and between them we see the discs. And also in this view, we look for alignment. Does the patient have scoliosis? which means does their back bend to the left or bend to the right? And this is pretty straight here. Now if we look down lower, we can also see the sacrum, which goes across here. And this is the ilium on the left, ilium on the right, and when the sacrum and ilium come together, we have the right SI joint, left SI joint. So we get a nice quick look here to see if they have sacroiliitis or a sacral stress fracture or any tumor down in the pelvis or in, in the uh, bony pelvis or the soft tissue pelvis down here. Now the next thing we do is go to a side view. This is called a sagittal view, and we have two types. One is called a T1 image, and the T1 weighted image, fat is really bright, and marrow, right here, these vertebral bodies, uh, is bright as well, has lots of fat content. And so we look here at the vertebral bodies, and this is the front, the belly button would be here. This is the back where the table would be to get oriented. And in this view, we can see, do this, does the patient have any spurs? Do they have any tumors within the vertebral bodies? Do they have arthritis? Do, are the discs nicely spaced? And this patient has actually very good disc spacing, and the alignment is normal. There's no slippage of the vertebral bodies. And the marrow is nice and homogeneous and uniform. There's no tumor that I see there. And now we can go to another view. And this view, fluid is really dark. And so the nerves are going through the spinal canal here, but they don't really seem that well. If we go off to the sides, we do see these little holes where the nerves are coming off called foramina. These will show up pretty well on this next view. So now I'm going to go to another view, and this is the same orientation, but now fluid is white. So the nerves in the spinal canal, here's the spinal canal, they stand out a little bit better. They look like strings of spaghetti coming down here. We see the discs between the vertebral bodies, these are the shock absorbers. And the discs should be bright like fluid, more bright than they are. So these ones are dark, which means they're having some wear and tear, starting to degenerate. We see the uterus here, a little bit of fluid in the uterine cavity, in the bladder. So we look at all these things. And also, we see the sacrum down here. So the vertebral bodies of the lumbar spine, there's five of them. Number one, two, three, four, five. And here's the sacrum. And then the next thing we do is look at these discs at each level. Is there a disc bulge or protrusion, herniation? And if so, does it cause any narrowing of the spinal canal? And we roll off to the sides to look at the holes called foramina. So at each level you see a dot. That's a nerve coming off through the hole or through the neural foramen. We have the right foramina. If we roll off, we have the left foramina. This patient has pretty nice foramina. Um, except for this one level, L4-5, there's some arthritis. So there's, you can have arthritis in the vertebral bodies, and also in the very back there's joints here called facet joints. This patient has some significant arthritis of her facet joints at this level, L4-5, and that is causing a little bit of narrowing um, where the foramina, uh, the very proximal foramina, right where the nerve is going into the foramina, but really, really minimal. And also this patient has a little disc protrusion right over here at this level, L5, S1. Very small little disc protrusion. You can zoom up there to appreciate that a little better. There it is. And there's a couple of little small areas right here where the disc material is in the middle. You have a thick fibrous band called the annulus fibrosis. And this annulus has a little wisp, a little bit of brightness. So it's a little what we call an annular fissure that can cause back pain. So we look for that. This patient also has a very small central protrusion with even a more prominent annular fissure here. And the last thing we do is we do images through the um, disc levels. This is it's called an axial image, so we'll slice through like this, and I'll show you what this would look like. So this is an axial image. This is right through one of the top discs. It's normal, the L12 disc. We see the spinal canal filled with fluid. We see these little dots in here. These are all the nerves that are going down, down, down. And when we get to the disc level, there are openings. This is called the right foramen. 
Here's the left foramen. We'd seen that on the other sagittal images. This is wide open, wide open foramina, wide open central canal. Now if we go down lower to the L4 five disc level where we had a, a bulging disc, we have a little annular fissure on the left, and right here is a facet joint that's too big, it's arthritic. Here's another facet joint that's arthritic. And this patient also has an extra little thing here. You couldn't see it on the other view, but right on this view, there's a little round area of brightness. We know brightness is fluid, so this is a very small synovial cyst coming off this facet joint, and it's pinching a nerve right there. That little dot is a nerve. See that getting pinched right there. And the spinal canal is a little bit narrowed, and again, we're pinching a nerve here on the right-hand side, so this may explain why they're having uh, their pain. Now if we go to, to, to the lowest level, L5S1, this is off to the left. We see the patient has a disc protrusion off towards the left-hand side here. And so this is pushing on the left S1 nerve. This would cause the left sciatica. And so that is how we read an MRI of the lumbar spine. Hopefully that was interesting. And uh, thank you very much for watching.